during his first campaign for the presidency, then VP George H.W. Bush held a press conference at the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. And among the reporters present was one Robert I. Sherman from the American Atheist News Journal, who actually got a chance to ask Bush a question. And quite logically, given the outlet he was representing, he asked him what his campaign was going to do to win the votes of Americans who are atheists. At first, Bush tried to brush off the question by saying, quote, I guess I'm pretty weak in the atheist community. Faith in God is important to me, end quote. But Sherman pressed him. He followed up by asking if Bush could at least recognize the equal citizenship and patriotism of atheist Americans, to which Bush famously replied, quote, no, I don't think that atheists should be considered as citizens, nor should they be considered patriots. This is one nation under God, end quote. A flabbergasted Sherman asked if he could at least state for the record that he was on board with separation of church and state, to which Bush reluctantly agreed, but added, quote, I'm just not very high on atheists, end quote. Now, as egregious as that was, believe it or not, it was not the worst thing Sherman got on record from the Bush campaign. About a year later, Sherman was in the midst of a lawsuit against his local school district for trying to force his kid to say the pledge. So when he was able to get a sit down with Ed Murnane, the co-chair of Bush's 88 campaign, he asked him, you know, what the campaign thought of the lawsuit. Here's the on the record exchange. Sherman, American atheists filed the Pledge of Allegiance lawsuit yesterday. Does the Bush campaign have an official response to this filing? Murnane, it's bullshit. Sherman, what is bullshit? Murnane, everything that American atheists does, Rob, is bullshit. Sherman, thank you for telling me what the official position of the Bush campaign is on the issue. Murnane, you're welcome. Now, here's the most fucked up aspect of all of this. It wasn't controversial. I mean, it wouldn't be right to say that the media ignored Bush's naked bigotry, right? Like, I know about it, obviously, but it wasn't exactly a scandal. He wasn't asked about it during the presidential debates later. He was never forced to walk back the statement by his handlers. It wasn't seen as anywhere near as egregious as, for example, his opponent wearing a helmet. If it wasn't for Trump, it would be impossible to imagine a mainstream American politician saying something like that today. But 35 years ago, it barely even made the news. I bring this up because in the 90s, there was a tectonic shift in American religiosity that has fascinated statisticians ever since. I mean, you can look at the numbers a lot of way, but the starkest subset of the numbers is to look at American adults between the ages of 18 35. In the 1991 General Social Survey, 87% of that group identified as Christian and only 8% had no religious affiliation. That number hadn't changed significantly in the two decades, by the way, that they had been doing that survey. But by 1997, it was down to 73% identifying as Christian and 20% unaffiliated. The numbers have continued to move in the right direction ever since, but never with the kind of rapidity that we saw over that short period. Now, many, if not most people, assume that this is primarily a function of the Internet, right? But as unofficial statistician of the scathing atheist Ryan Burge points out, the data doesn't really support that as a complete explanation. After all, according to the Census Bureau, by 1997, only about one in five American households had Internet access. I, I mean, 20% having access to the internet means more than 20% having access to the information, but it's still not enough to explain such a precipitous drop. A, a lot of theories have been put forward to explain it, of course, but here's one to consider. So uh, by 1987, American atheists had an accredited reporter in the Illinois press pool that got to ask George Bush a question. Yes, Bush got it as wrong as it's possible to get it, but he still got asked. In the wake of Bush's bigotry, American atheists sent a letter to every member of Congress urging them to censure the president for impugning the patriotism of a minority group. And no, none of them signed on to that resolution, but a lot of them saw the fucking letter. A lot of them were aware, many for the first time, that atheists were taking notes of the bigoted shit that they were saying. That letter went out on February of 1990. I mean, there were a lot of demographic forces pushing us towards decreased religiosity in the early 1990s, but one of them that far too often gets overlooked is all the hard and thankless work American atheists was doing in the decades leading up to it. Hell, consider the whole reason American atheists came into existence back in 1963. The, these adults from 18 to 35 in 1997, that represented the first generation of Americans to grow up in schools that weren't allowed to have mandatory Christian prayer. 
Right? That, that ended in 1962, 1997, minus 35. I'm not that good at math, but I know that one. Our activism matters. Our organizations matter. Our communities matter. Even our defeats can help move us forward if there's somebody like Robert Sherman there to do the legwork and publicize them afterwards. And I point this out because a lot of people, even a lot of atheists, cast aspersions on things like the American Atheist Convention that's going on this weekend in Atlanta. They're written off as useless echo chambers of self-indulgence, but the communities they build and the activists they inspire matter. They build tomorrow's world, and we owe it to yesterday to do at least as much for the future as they did for us.